Councilors, uh, time haven't arrived. I'm going to call the Finance Committee meeting for uh, Monday, November 5th, uh, it being 7 p.m. to order. Just a couple pieces of information before we get into the agenda. Um, Ward 2 Council Tom Monaghan is under the weather. He's not going to be able to join us tonight. Um, the Council President, um, I spoke to Dennis today. Uh, he's feeling better. Okay. Um, his, his hope is to come back um, next week. And remember, next Monday is a holiday, so we'll have full council on Tuesday. Mm -hmm. Okay? Uh, and then again, Wednesday night, two nights um, from tonight, here at 6 o'clock, Ordinance Committee. So those that sit on the ordinance, please be here at 6 o'clock okay, sharp. Uh, we're going to deal with the marijuana issue. Um, and then also, the only other issue, Councilors, is on number five when we get there. Uh, Chief Mike Williams from the Fire Department called me today. Unfortunately, um, he had a, a conflict tonight. I told him there was no problem. You know, he gave me a courtesy call. He called Dennis as well. Uh, but it is just a standard appropriation. Um, it's not going to get uh, under suspension rules. It's going to go to full council. So I just want to let you know the fire chief did reach out. He's unable to join us tonight. With that being said, we're going to go into uh, agenda item number one, please. Appointment of Mario Lopez Alves, 23 Smith Ave, Brockton, Mass., as a constable in the city of Brockton for a term of three years, invited Mario Lopes. Kind of cramped quarters here, so unfortunately, and, I, and I'm sorry, you, 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 we're going to have the podium there. Um, good evening, how are you? I'm doing well, what's up? Go, I'm doing well, thanks for being here. Do you, you have a statement you want to make to the council? Um, I just want to reapply to the process, civil process, and this is my action. What is it? Which, how many? Second. 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 Okay. Motion to recommend favorably. Second. On the motion. Any questions from staff? No, we have a motion. On the, it was properly second to favor recommendation back to the full council. All in favor, please raise your hand. Okay. All opposed, motion carries. We'll thank take you. a formal vote, final vote next Tuesday night. Thank you very Okay, much, thank you. Have a good evening. Madam Clerk, number two, please. Appointment of Lohan S.O. Moriah, 11 Bellevue Ave, apartment number one. W. Brockton, Mass. As constable in the city of Brockton for a term of three years, invited Lohan S.O. Moriah. Mr. Moriah, good evening. Thank you for being here. Good evening, sir. Do you have a statement for the council? Yes. Um, I was a constable for three years. Uh, my license is prior March 18th. I'm trying to be a constable for more, um, three more years. Um, I have a lot of training. These three years that I was a constable, I went to a reserve police uh, intimate academy for six months. Um, most of the seminar have a uh, first responder card, CPI, AD, and uh, I'd like to be appointed as a possible. Thank you. Motion to recommend favor. Second. Second. So motion for any questions? Motion to close probably second. Favor recommendation back to the full council. If you're in favor, please raise your hand. If you're opposed, raise your hand. Motion carries. We'll take a formal final vote next yeah. Tuesday. Good morning. Thank you. I'm going to go on to agenda night of three, please. Appointment of Deborah Hodges Pabon of 21 Field Street, Brockton, Mass., to the Brockton Cultural Council for a six year term. Invited Deborah Hodges Pabon. Is Ms. Pabon here? What's the will of the council on this? You wanna, uh, maybe she's running late because of the weather. You want it? We'll just. Motion, motion to recommend. Motion. Just hold it until the yeah, last agenda. Until the end of the meeting. Everybody okay with that? Yeah. Yes. In favor of uh, holding it to the end, please raise your hand. If you're opposed, raise your hand. It carries. We're going to take number three at the end of the evening tonight. Uh, number four, please. Reappointment of James C. Doucette, 260 Tory Street, Brockton, Mass., as a constable in the city of Brockton mm -hmm. for a term of three years. Invited James C. Doucette. <coughs> Doucette, good evening. Good evening, sir. Thank you for being here. How are you? Thank you as well. I am well. Do you have a statement for the council? I do. Ladies and gentlemen of, of the Finance Committee, thank you for the invitation to appear here tonight. My name is James C. Doucette. I'm a lifelong resident of the city of Brockton. This will be my fourth term as constable for this city. I own a home here. I'm the director of loss prevention for Vicente Supermarkets. I take the role of constable very seriously, and I always endeavor to carry out my duties in a conscientious and social re socially responsible manner. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Motion Mr. to recommend favorably. Second. This motion on the floor. It was probably second to favor recommendation. Back to the full council. If you're in your favor, please raise your hand. If you're opposed, it carries. We'll take a final vote on next Tuesday night. Thank, Thank you, you, Mr. Doucette. Could go on to number five, please. Appropriation of 24507 and 10 cents 
from unappropriated estimated receipts of the general fund fiscal year 19 to FEMA reimbursement $18,315.32, fiscal year 17 state 9-11 grant $4,785.02, fiscal year 18 9-11 training $774.30, school roof repairs $632.46. Invited John A. Condon, Chief Financial Officer, John Crowley, Chief Police, Michael F. Williams, Chief Fire, <coughs> Kathleen Smith, Superintendent, Brockton Public Schools. Councils, before we hear Mr. Condon, I just want to recognize we do have the Police Chief here, um, Mr. Crowley's here, and also uh, other patronal from the schools on behalf of <coughs> Kathy Smith, the Superintendent. Of course, Chief Williams, uh, as I said earlier, couldn't make it. Mr. Condon, good evening. Good evening. Uh, Councils, when we set the tax rate, if there are deficits and funds on the balance sheet, the DOR likes to have those eliminated before they approve the tax rate. So we've got some of these deficits which are from a variety of years past, and we're not going to get and cleared the reimbursements and so we're asking for appropriation. The first is from a FEMA request uh, back several years ago and they're tough to deal with. Some of the requests we put in for they wouldn't uh, wouldn't approve. Uh, we fought for a while at the end of June. We had a right to either appeal and spend more money or take a final settlement check for $18,000 and just we'll take the last dollar and finish that one up. The other two uh, uh, the next two are actually are from uh, 911 grants, which are mainly fire and police expenditures. There, sometimes they will disallow an expenditure, perhaps in some cases some of the police officers didn't have the proper certification when they submitted the training request, or when they asked for an audit, the uh, fire department for a couple hundred bucks wasn't able to reconcile the overtime request they were asking for. So those are from uh, 911 grants. The final one is from an old school roof repair project where a stray invoice came in after we borrowed the money and you know, we have $632 to pay for and we're not going to borrow that amount of money so it's just to pay for other appropriation. So those are the explanations for the motion. Motion to recommend favorably. On the motion. On the motion, Councillor. Uh, Mr. Condon, what is what school is that for? Which roof? I don't remember off the top you of my head. It's from an older project, it's not from a current older, project. Older, like how old? 2012, 2013. Mr. Patrono, do you happen to know that? What school was applicable to? Which exact school it was, but we had done um, all the roofs at Brockton High School. We had done the roofs at the uh, Davis School yep. and the Raymond School. Raymond. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Any you. other questions for Mr. Conan? So motion on the floor, right? It was properly second in favor of recommendation back to the council. If you're in favor, please raise your hand. If you're opposed, that motion carries. Favor Thank back to the full council. Thank you, Mr. Conan. Number six, Madam Clerk, please. Appropriation of 700000 from unappropriated estimated receipts of the general fund fiscal year 19 to stabilization fund invited John A. Condon, Chief Financial Officer. Uh, also, this is an appropriation in anticipation coming to you to set the tax rate. I think most of you who have been around for a while know that we do the budget. We estimate the local receipts lower than we're actually going to probably end up having as a budgeted number because when we do the budget, we don't have a final number in. We don't have the final number for taxation, new growth either. And so the combination of uh, those additional revenues plus the council cuts that weren't spent in earlier appropriations, uh, my recommendation is to take, take that additional money and put it into the stabilization fund. It will be there for your use if you want to use it later. Screws. Thank you. Uh, just wondering, so uh, 700000 better receipts than we anticipated, is that? Better than we budgeted for. Budgeted. Yes. And are these mostly from regular? Uh, it's a, about a 50-50 mix between taxation new growth. Uh, which was higher than the budget, we ended up with uh, certified from the, when we do the budget, we don't have certification on the new growth right. from the Department of Revenue. The final certified number was about 2.2 million. We budgeted just over 1.7. And then on the local receipts from a variety of fees and excise taxes, again, we budget low. And then when we get to this time, we have to, we have to budget about 90 to 95% of the prior year for the DOR to approve it. That number is a little bit higher than we anticipated. So the combination of those two things, plus the council cuts, minus the appropriations that were done earlier this year it comes to a, le a leftover amount of 700000 Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Council Rodriguez. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, uh, Mr. Conner, what's the current balance on the stabilization fund? Uh, that would be something like 3.2 or $3.3 .3 million. So this will get us close to $4 million. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Council Castro. Thank you. That was my question, the current okay. balance. Thank you. Any other questions for the CFO? Motion recommend favorably. Second, sir. So motion made, uh, properly seconded. It's a favorable recommendation back to the council. All in favor? All opposed? That motion carries. Thanks, Mr. Connor. Favorable back to the full council. Number seven, Madam Clerk. 
ordered that the City Council authorizes the acceptance and expenditure of additional grant funds in the amount of 50000 from Massachusetts Department of Public Health Legislative Earmark Funding Grant to City of Brockton Police Department Legislative Earmark Funding Grant Fund. Invited John A. Condon, Chief Financial Officer, John Crowley, Chief Police. Uh, Councilors, this is actually it's not really so, really so much as a grant as it's specific language in the state budget earmarking the money for the champion uh, program through the, uh, I think they subcontract their staffing through an outfit called Grandora. So this is an earmark more than it is a grant, uh, a grant fund. Wow. All right. Council President. Good evening. <laughs> No, you don't. Not that president. Good to see you back, Mr. Nice president. To see you folks. Hey, any questions for Mr. Condon? Yes. Councilor Castro, please. Good evening, Mr. Condon. So I understood it was an earmark from the state legislature. Yes, ma'am. What are we using the money for? It'll be used for staffing at the Champion Plan through the outfit that provides in their staffing. Okay. None of the green. paperwork said that that I that I noticed. No, all we have is the earmark language. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. Any other questions on this agenda item? Motion recommend favorably. Second. So motion made was properly second. All in favor? All opposed? Favor recommendation back to the Thank full you, council. Counsel. Thanks, Mr. Conner. Morning number eight, please. Ordered that the City Council authorizes the acceptance and expenditure of additional grant funds in the amount of $39,350.50 from U.S. Department of Justice Fiscal Year 2018 Bulletproof Vest Program Grant to the City of Brockton Police Department Fiscal Year 2018 Bulletproof Vest Program Grant Fund. Invited John A. Condon, Chief Financial Officer, John Crowley, Chief Police. Mr. Condon. Uh, Councilors, this is a uh, reimbursement grant, and the, uh, there's no match because the uh, grant match was already appropriated last year. Second. This motion on the floor is probably on, fav on the, fa on the yeah. motion. Yeah. Councilor Rodriguez, please. Uh, Mr. Condon, perhaps this is a, a question for the Chief. Um, does this? Let me just wait until he comes on. Question two. Hello, Chief. How are you? Thank you. Uh, just a quick question. Um, first, uh, what's the cost per uh, the uh, bulletproof vest for the individual officers? Do you have any idea how much they cost? I don't have an exact number for you, no. And did were we be able to get one for every single? commissioned officer that we actually have in the city? Yes, but not everyone is, is retiring. Um, they're good for a lifespan of five years. So we review what we have and go through the inventory and see who's is going to age out and then we order the new ones. But as of right now, everybody in the police department yes. actually has a, some, uh, an operable? Yes. Okay. All right, thank you. Thank you. Hudson Castro, please. Thank you. Good evening, Carolyn. Thanks for being here. So I was just wondering, and I, I read the materials that provided to us, how long does a bulletproof vest last? And how do you know when time's five years. up? Five years. It lasts five years? And I, I noticed it, in the paperwork we were given, they have to fit a certain way. So you put on a few pounds, you might need a new bulletproof vest. Oh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. <laughs> <laughs> and so that's what happens sometimes, they don't fit so well, they're a little snug? Well, they get refitted after five years to okay. come and refit you. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Entertain a motion. Motion so recommend second. favorably. This motion on the floor is properly seconds in favor of recommendation. Back to the council. If you're in favor, please raise your hand. If you're opposed, raise your hand. Motion carries. Favorable back to the full council. I'm going to go on to uh, number nine, please. Resolve to invite Larry Rowley, the head of the Department of Public Works, and a representative from traffic to discuss with the City Council the situation with the snow removal, parking on streets, and other concerns that arise during the winter months. Invited Larry Rowley, Commissioner, Department of Public Works, John Hallisey, Captain Police. Commissioner, good evening. How are you? Good evening, Councilors. How was everybody? Good. Thank you for being good. here. Um, a brief statement, you had me up here last year, so not much has changed since then. 
Well, um, this is this is what I want to talk about. Remember how we had this really productive traffic commission meeting recently, and we discussed the digital signs mm -hmm. that we were going to put at major intersections, mm -hmm. informing people that the winter parking ban would go into effect, and maybe something like visiting www, what have you, to find out how. And this is why, you know, I asked you, you know, I, I put down here to bring someone else from traffic that would, you know, say that we're going to do a lot of reinforcement for this. Again, this is not a reflection on yourself, but I want when your team comes out, okay, because there's winter parking ban and snow emergency, to be able to plow the streets. And even today, it says no parking. I see all these cars parked. And, well, today doesn't matter as much, but it does matter when you guys are trying to plow the streets. And the, the, every year we seem to have a little bit of a challenge with this, and that's why I invite you every year, because each year we're getting there with improvements. So I figured that I was very excited and I wanted you to be able to you know, mention that these um, digital signs would be going up in different locations and that people would be able to see them flashing. I know there was discussion of putting them in, in some of the languages. I know that you, this always goes out into the paper. This is always on the city's website. And <coughs> last year you started with putting them in, in the water bills. So that's great. So we're, we're getting the, we're, it, this is not a reflection on your department. We're letting everybody know. So we want your department to be able to plow the streets so that people, you know, you know, if the first responders need to get down there, they're going to be able to get down the street. And the people that are going to work are going to be able to get to work, etc. So now, I guess we have the other part, the enforcement piece. So, I guess right now, this might be directed at Captain Hallisey. Um, how are we going to do this to get some more enforcement going on? And well, um, what I gather is going to go down there. Preview, maybe, of um, mm -hmm. how we plan to do the. <laughs> We're going to give warnings. Like yes. we do it every year, two or uh -huh. three times before December 1st. Then we start ticketing. We have the midnight to 8 shift ticket. No ticket cars that are parked on the districts that they're not supposed to. And then when there's a snow removal, if it's a snow emergency, we ticket until. Yeah. Okay. So uh, when you're going to start this, what, like the 20th of November? Probably. What do you think? I mean, I just threw up we, that date. We're going to put these cards. Yes. We know where the high pack, high impact area, high okay. impact yes. areas are. Okay. So the police will go out the weekend after Thanksgiving, or the weekend. Yes, that's Sunday night, and we'll start putting okay. these on cars. So we're looking at about the This is in four different okay. languages. It tells all about the snow emergency, the winter bans, and everything. We did this. We've done this last for the last three or four years. Um, so we know exactly where to put these. And like I said, last year it was the first storm is usually our hardest storm. Yep. After that, if your car gets towed, they don't, <laughs> more or less, they don't do it again. Some of them do. Um, but the first storm is usually a high impact storm to, to move vehicles. Okay. So we will put these out probably two or three times, hopefully before the snow flies. I'm hoping this year there's no snow. But we are too. <laughs> <laughs> we don't always but, get what uh, we hope for. <laughs> we, yeah, we put these on, like you said, we put it in the water bills. We put it everywhere we can. We put it on the web, and now we'll put it on that one digital board that okay. we're going to put on different... The fire department. There's only one board, yeah. but the fire department... Yeah, and then we'll put it on each line. side of the city and leave it there for maybe okay, a week thanks. or so. And That's our plans. Okay, and, and, and since I have um, Captain Halsey up too, thank you, um, Commissioner. Uh, the other part of this is... Do you run into a situation where you, you let's say you, you leave that on the car and the car is still there? Yes. What do you do in that case? I've done it where I've put the, put the sticker on there or the yes. card, talked to the people, then I later go there and I've towed it before with the okay. guy. They, they so don't, I, some people listen, some people don't. They take advantage of it, they would move their car. Okay, so am I to understand in some cases the car might have been abandoned or might... If it's abandoned, we, we would run the plate, and if it's unregistered, and short, okay, we so you, you are you do that. Okay, yes. all right. So those were those were some of the concerns because, like I said, we're you know we know 
that some instances, I mean, I love it. Some people say, oh, well, it's too inconvenient for me to leave the car in the driveway, so I park it on the street. And then we get, you know, and then they're mad because, you know, there's a snow removal situation going on. But that's, I, we want to emphasize that we're, how would I say it, we're doing our best to see that, you know, this addresses a situ situation because so many other people run into dilemmas. And we want to be able to, you know, some of these streets are tight to begin with. And then parking on the street already makes it, you know, worse than it is. So no, no, thank you, thank you very much for, for coming out. I'll defer to my colleagues. Thank you, Councillor. Any other it. questions, Councillor? I think there's a process in place, and, and we want to thank the gentleman for being yeah, here. Any questions you. for this? Seeing that, I entertain a motion. Motion to recommend favorably. Thank you. Motion on the floor is properly seconded. It's a favorable recommendation back to the council. All in favor? I'll oppose that motion. Carries. It's a favorable back to the full council. If we could go on to number uh, ten, please. Resolve to invite Larry Rowley, the head of the Department of Public Works, for the city to inform the city council and the public and with an update on the new street lights. Invited Larry Rowley, Commissioner, Department of Public Works. Councils, I just want to say, and I, I think every, every one of us, all 11, can say, uh, relative to the street lights, Larry Rowley is top notch. I mean, his office, and I know Susan is going to echo the same sentiments, it, you call them and it gets addressed, you know? I think the biggest thing is to go to the poll and see the little number tag. That's the biggest endeavor. But um, with that being said, is this, and this is your resolve? Yes, it is. Yes. Okay, so again, thank you. I wanted you to count me, you know, for, and, you know, one, and not have to come more than once on this. But you had mentioned that um, this, there were about 8,000 lights when we had this, uh, you know, it's discussion. Good. And where are we? Are they all done or yes. close to done? I mean, yes. the this project is not, we're not you know, breathing down your neck. I was just, you know, to find out, you know, where we would be with this. Yes, the project started about a year ago and we finished up October 1st of this year. Okay. We still do have some out there, counselors, that, we, that were missed on the audit. There could be 100, maybe 200 left. Okay. If you see them, call me or call, call the office and we'll change them out. Okay. Um, because we're, we're also looking for them at night oh, to are. get them okay. changed out. Yeah, and, and all the schools have been done also. Oh, yeah. All the schools, the... Uh, That's terrific, yeah. So when it's, when it's done and over with, we should probably see about a 60% savings. Okay. On, uh, Oh no, the, the whole the whole concept of it is excellent, and we and the reason bringing it up is, is threefold because this was you hadn't always worked with this company, so were they were they reliable oh, and yes. so yeah. that that okay that was yeah one the thing. installation company is great they've had our maintenance contract for the last four or five years so okay. we call them they check in with us every Wednesday sorry I got them done Thursday okay. up in your neighborhood Wednesday okay um, but they come every Wednesday we give them a list and then we change them all out. Okay, so that was one thing. Two, because I, I was curious of how you found out, and then I thought about it. I said, I wonder if there's a drone that goes around and, you know, check. No, just no. you in. Just <laughs> you. It's not just me. No, these are people. No, so that was. But no, because this is so good on so many levels. I mean, these lights are positively terrific. It's a bonus. Thanks to the council on that one, Anna. Yes, I know, I know, I know. We tended to get that. It was the council yes, that created yes, this endeavor. Yes. yes. I know. Our acting presence do, do, came up with this. And it's great. But no, in all. So I got a streetlight tattoo right here yes, on my arm. <laughs> But no, it, seriously, it, it does it does so much of a difference for you know the, the streets themselves. Yes. Two, we always know that if the street lights are working, it's a deterrent for crime. So that's you know an added bonus. Yes. And and then the, the fourth part was I was curious. It seems like you'll go down the street, and I know that they replace them all, and all of them, but like maybe two will be out. Right. And it's like. I, is there something with I just some mentioned that earlier that they were missed on the audit. We had probably a total of maybe 300 that were missed on the audit. Okay. All and right. we've captured most of them, but we still have a, maybe just a hundred, maybe minus a plus, that we still have to get. And, and, and to answer your question, I don't know why the hell that was done. It didn't make sense to me. Mm -hmm. They do three, skip two, and do another three. Is that what they did? Oh, no, okay. no, that's yeah. what they did. That's what oh, happened. It shouldn't okay. have happened that way. Oh, but. okay. So that was that was one of my questions. The other question yes. was that, for example, like the street I live on, I, you guys put them in, then 
I, I remember it too because it was snowing. And I said, oh my God, these guys are out here and it's crappy weather. Anyway, and then the next day, the light wasn't working. Then you guys replaced it. Now it's not working again. Are there some outlets that, uh, or some part of component that's not working? It, it could be something. Just call it and we'll have it checked. Oh, no, I, I, I will, but I was just curious. We, so that we, can be a, a, con a, con a condition, a yeah, it could. It could be anything. Okay. It could be a bad wire. It could be the smart control that we put on top of these. Um, okay. It could be a number of things. I'm not an electrician, so no, okay. I can't no, answer just, that, but just call it in. We'll have it checked. Okay. And one of the reasons I was asking this, too, is sometimes, you know how you hear these recalls with cars? Everyone's uh -huh. just driving around. Everything's fine. And all of a sudden, there's this massive recall, and everybody has to bring their car in because of a particular component. Half yeah. the people that have a problem with it, and the other half, you know, were always going to their mechanic about something. So I was just wondering if there might have been a recall with No, one there was the, no recall. Uh, no? Okay. No. no. All and right. if it makes you feel any better, my street hasn't been done yet either. So. <laughs> no, it wasn't a man. I'm not, you know, citing that. I was just curious about these various situations, and I was wondering mm -hmm. how to keep, you know, continue keeping up with it. So I am to understand that you, yourself with this company, your, your, you know, your department, will always be, this will be a constant situation. Well, until we catch up with all the, and, and, and remove all the high sodiums and put LEDs in. Yes, and it's, it, that won't, you know, that won't last long. We'll, we'll, we'll get most of them. And then once an LED is put in, if there is no problem with any kind of switches ten year or whatever. Ten-year lifespan, yeah. Ten years. Ten-year lifespan. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. Thank you. So that's, yeah. a, that's why I like So there should be very little maintenance on these other than if we have knockdowns or trees fall on. Okay. Something like that. Or install new lights, which uh, I've had a few requests for. Okay. And you had brought that up one time, too. So if we want some installed. It, that costs more than if the pole was already there. The pole well, of course it does, there. yes. If there's, if there's no light there at all, yes. Okay, but if yes. there's a pole and there's no light, that's one component. But if there was yes. never a pole there in the first place, we can't, then you have to, okay, yeah. go through we, all the different We really steps. can't put a light up. We Good can't point. put a pole just for a light. Council, just okay. point of information. The city sure. of Brockton acquired the Cobra light, not the pole. The pole is still yes. owned by the utility company. Okay. So the all only right. thing the city of Brockton can do is if there's an existing pole mm -hmm. without the Cobra light, then you can call it in and just look at the number. But you as a counselor can't request Larry to put a pole in. The city doesn't have that asset. Okay. No, I, uh, but if, if there was a, so the company itself, the utility company yes. would have to put it yes. in. Yes. Okay. Because that might arise. In the well, that's why they come before us when they have to move poles. Yes. Because it's their okay. asset. All right. Okay. Thank you. No, because there might be one or two You're locations welcome. where somebody wants something like that, you know, to do. No. Thank you. Can Thank I have you. Councilor Castro followed by Councilor Farwell, please? Thank, Thank you. you. Thank Mr. You. Rowley, um, on behalf of Ward 4, many of our streets are much brighter since I've taken office because you've, you've um, acknowledged and, and acquiesced to all my requests. One of my first official acts was lights for Peterson Avenue and those people are still smiling because it's made such a difference. Thank you so much. Oh, you're um, I just hope, I do have a few more requests coming in and I just That's hope fine. there are more lights. That's fine, Council. Great, thank you we'll very We'll take much. a look at it and, and yes. I hope whoever requests a new light to be installed that they look at it first because some of these don't warrant new lights. Yes. And, you know, we are trying, you know, you can't put a price tag on public safety, but that's right. we don't want to overdo it either, so. Well, that's true, but also the perception of safety. Yes, comes absolutely. From, comes Absol from, that's right, the brightness absolutely. of the lights. That's what I said, public safety is first. That's right. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor. Councilor Fowell, please. Uh, Commissioner, that was, that was my question about uh, the warranty. If there's a 10-year warranty, it seems like a lot of these are turning up on C-Click Fix. So we don't pay for a new light if you have to put it in, am no, I right? we don't. Okay, no. so do we call the vendor and they come out and... Yes, we call our maintenance contractor. Okay. He'll come out and replace it, and I believe he ships it back. All yes, right, thank there's you. There's a 10-year life warranty on those, so... Thank you very much. I'm Thank covered. you. Councilor Cruz, please. Thank you. And just, uh, I heard you mention to Councilor Farwell, but just so the public knows, those lights that do need to be fixed or warrantied, you have, they come out once a week? Yes. Uh, just, we had, I had a call that I talked to Commissioner Rowley on that I got on Tuesday night, the night before Halloween, and the homeowners wanted them replaced for Halloween. Same one. And just so the public knows, public safety is paramount, but they can't be turned around in one day. Um, so just try to be patient in that case, uh, you know, it was, uh, 
you did get up there quickly and fix those, but it was not done for Halloween because we didn't find out about it till Tuesday evening when I got home from work and that just meant, so just want the public to know that we're doing them, but it can't happen overnight, so yeah, thank I believe, you. I believe they were done Thursday. All right. Thank you. Thank You're you, Councilor. Any other questions? I'd like to take a motion. Motion to recommend favorably. Second. second. So motion made is probably second as a favorable recommendation back to the council. All in favor? All opposed. Motion carries. Thank you. Larry, don't Thank forget you. your Thank budget you. next yes. year. Put in a, a line item for a drone. With Ian's name on it. With Ian's name on it. We're going <laughs> to. We'll let you fly it here. <laughs> We're going to go on to uh, number 11, please. Resolve to invite the city solicitor or representative from the law department to inform the city council and the public as to the new contract with Comcast or if the new contract has not been signed. Information as to where we as a community stand on this issue. Invited, Philip C. Nasralla, solicitor. Councilor Borgard, I believe this was your... Yes, this was my resolve. Yes, and I spoke with the city solicitor, and the law department is still working closely with um, the attorneys with Comcast, and they asked me to postpone this to the last finance committee meeting in November. Second. Uh, motion is properly made and properly second. All those in favor, all those against. Thank you. Mr. Chair. Thank you, Councilor. Uh, Councilors, um, we are going to go back to uh, number three. I do believe the individual has appeared. She was delayed because of the weather. So again, if we could just read into the record, Madam Clerk, number three again, please. Sure. Appointment of Deborah Hodges Pabon of 21 Field Street, Brockton, Mass, to the Brockton Cultural Council for a six-year term. Invited Deborah Hodges Pabon. Good evening. Hi. Thank you for being here. So just a phonetic correction. It's actually Deborah. The R and the O are in reverse order. Trick of the eye. Good evening, and I apologize yeah, for being for late. Thanks for picking that up. We appreciate that. <laughs> I well, usually do. That was good. Do you uh, do you have any statement for uh, for the councils? Um, so I've been a Brockton resident for six years as of last month, and I don't know a lot about Brockton. And so this year has afforded me a lot of time and opportunity to really find this place now called home and figure out a way to serve. And so I've been trying to expand my network locally and as I talk to people, another door opens, another door opens. Hence, I am here Excellent. at this open door ready to serve. And I'm really excited to serve on the Cultural Council because I know that they do great work and they're also looking to kind of diversify how the monies are being distributed in another way. And so that excites me to kind of bring a new life and vibrancy to Brockton. Excellent. Thank you so much. Yes. Any questions? Council Fowler, just, question. just I looked at uh, yeah. the Deborah, Deborah Broa's. Just Deb. Deb. <laughs> I looked at Deb's resume, and I and I have to tell you, we, and I don't say this about a lot of resumes, but that is one impressive resume. And I, how wow. you find time to, to do this, I don't know, but we're blessed in the city to have someone like you step forward. I mean, that's, I, I wish the public could read it because they, they, they're, they're, my colleague here has always preached that if you. If you extend an offer of service or you do outreach, people will come forward and serve. And I, yes. I guess you are the quintessential example of that. So. Thank you. You humble me. Thank <laughs> you. Very much appreciated. Thank, Thank you. Yeah. Good luck. Yeah. Yeah, I went to take a motion. You, you have a question? No. I need to take a motion. I made a motion. You did it. Okay. Yes. Motion made was probably second. Favor recommendation back to the council. All in favor? Yeah. All opposed. Motion carries. Thank you. Madam, we'll do a final vote on that next Tuesday night. Okay. Thank you. And again, if we could just fix that Scrivener's error for the for the final vote, mm -hmm. um, councilors. Um, yeah, we just pronounced it wrong. It, it's it's correct. correct. Oh, we just so pronounced it wrong. Yes. Okay, I see. Yes. So it's, it is. Okay. Dramatically, okay. Deborah. Thank you. Right there. We'll just go with Deb. It'd be easier that way. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Constance, a couple, a couple of pieces of information. Uh, number one, um, you may recall uh, Ward 1 Councilor Cruz and myself filed a resolve uh, as a result of um, the tragedy that happened down the Cape when, uh, when, when Officer Gannon was, was murdered. Um, 
and we, we spoke uh, at that time to get tourniquets and holders for each and every officer. Uh, I'm happy to say through the efforts of, of the mayor's office and this body and the CFO and again the president of the unions, uh, they started being handed out today. So that's that's a good thing for the officers that, that protect us on a daily basis. So, uh, and Mr. Maker told me that. So thank you again. and. Uh, Again, we're, we're very fortunate to have the men and women that serve the city of Brockton. So that, I just want to let you know that. I also want to thank publicly Mike Thomas, Assistant Superintendent of Schools, who, who set this, uh, this up uh, tonight. And we'll, we'll be using this again until um, the first meeting in December because of Brockton High Drama Club. Um, I do think um, we probably want to reconfigure it a bit because it's tough to have a podium there and Council Rodriguez is back. So um, maybe we can you know, shape it a different way. But, but again, I wanted to thank Mike on that and, and Superintendent Smith as well. And uh, one thing that I always say, Councilors, and I've been on the Council 13 years and I do this, and Mr. Cruz will know I do this, tomorrow's Election Day in the City of Brockton. Polls are open at 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. I don't care if you're a Democrat, Republican, unenrolled, independent. If you're a registered voter, please go to the polls tomorrow and vote. It's very, very vital, not just locally, but, but on the state level and, and, and nationally as well. So thank you. That's my two cents. And again, we have the, the president of the council here tonight. Walking a little bit faster than what I used to. It's, uh, it's great to see you all. I have to say that I've uh, missed you even though I've seen you on TV, so I've been watching you as well. So I'm keeping up, and I, I, I just hope that, uh, and I hope you're all getting the shopping carts, because I saw a few when I was coming up the street here, so please, please. Uh, but in any case, um, I do want to uh, I do want to just take time to uh, thank the council for the uh, planter that was uh, dropped at uh, my house by the acting uh, council president. Um, I didn't happen to see him that day. My sister um, took it in because that was the day for PT, so I was busy. But um, in any case, I appreciate that, and I appreciate all all and everyone that's been sending some cards and those that uh, even contacted me, uh, even through emails, even through text, uh, I, I did not find that uh, uh, my issue needed to go on social media, so I didn't do that. So, uh, in any case, um, I, I do I do appreciate uh, appreciate that. And just a follow up to um, um, what Council Sullivan was saying this evening and your configuration as well. Um, I, I do want to just reach out to uh, uh, Deputy Superintendent uh, Thomas and and even to uh, Ken Thompson and even the Mayor. Uh, when I had discussion with them about uh, this location that I thought um, new seating was uh, somewhat adequate, some type of seating, and that they indicated they were going to do what they could, and um, they've, they've done that. So, um, And it's appropriate not only just for us, for, but for everybody that seems to be using this, because, you know, at this point, I, I think, and I, and I don't want to be repeated with it, but uh, um, from my, my understanding, you know, we could still be um, out of City Hall till at least, uh, at least the beginning of January. So, you know, that could be may not be, but they are working there feverishly um, day and night. So despite the fact I've been, I've been home uh, and you can only look out a bay window so long, trust me, believe me, it's, uh, it's uh, been a long four weeks, but um, uh, the doctor made me happy when he said, uh, you can drive, just keep it local, keep it slow. I said, well, I go very slow anyway, so there's no doubt that I'd be going fast. But it's nice, uh, nice to be back out, and uh, hopefully I look forward to um, coming next week to, uh, to the city council meeting, the finance meetings. I'll see how length they are because I can't sit in, in a lengthy uh, situation long but uh, if anything I can uh, also uh, rule it out uh, to some one other person whether it be the councils that have been presidents before or, or even uh, Council Rodriguez as, as well because he's been a long-term guy here too so um, in any case um, I look forward to my return and uh, you've done a great job it's uh, it's no doubt it uh, um, it's been a tough year, but I think uh, we'll have a great year next year. I think we'll do much better too when we're back in we're back in City Hall. So uh, again, tomorrow's a big day, as you said. Go out and vote. Doesn't matter who we are, what we are, how we're registered. It's it's important. It really, really is. Um, uh, we got a problem in this country, and uh, uh, we need to start to really uh, look forward to how we're going to solve it because we're divided. So let's let's get undivided. So with that being said, thank you, Mr. President. I appreciate the time. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So again, a couple pieces of information. If, uh, if you uh, either sit on the Ordinance Committee or you want to join us again Wednesday night here at 6 o'clock, um, next Monday is Veterans Day. We have the parade. I know Mr. Um, uh, David Farrell sent us all uh, notice about that on next Monday, a week from today. So we'll be here Tuesday at 7 o'clock. And I do, I do want to take a moment um, to pay respect for Armand Colombo. If, uh, if you were fortunate to have played football for coach, which I, I, I did, um, he was a great coach, but he's a great teacher, a great mentor, uh, and a great Brocktonian. Um, so I know the Colombo family, Marciano family, and everybody um, 
uh, in the city of Brockton and actually statewide and nationally, uh, it's, a, it's a great loss. So if we could just take a, a moment of silence for uh, Coach Colombo, that would be great. May you rest in peace. Thank you, Councilors. Anything else before us tonight, Council, Council and Council Fowell, please? Uh, just, just a moment of personal privilege. Yes. Th just a quick shout out to uh, Charlie Tataglia, who's been under the weather a little bit, but is better, and also to his brother, Lou, who is our Executive Director of the Board of Health. Um, sending best wishes to them. I know they'll be back into the full swing of things, but uh, just wanted to acknowledge two great Brock Tony. Very much so. Thank you, Council. Council Beauregard, please. Th thank you. Mr. Chair, uh, I, have, uh, I want to bring up the fact that we have to start talking about the census of 2020. And already now, uh, Mass Hire, formerly BayWIP, has uh, positions. They're taking applications. They have the information out there for part-time and full-time positions starting in uh, 2019 to uh, get this going. We know how important the national census is, and particularly for our community, because the more that everyone is counted, the more funding can come to our city at the federal level. So uh, I just thought that this is uh, great that they're already starting, you know, kicking this off. And uh, it's right downtown, School Street, and, uh, and of course everyone can go online. Because it's, it's hard to remember this. Mass Hire just what, came Mass Hire three weeks ago. It's been Bay with and they're still and people you know are prepared and interested all ages all backgrounds both part-time full-time weekends and uh, the, the positions are um, coming in there because they need to hire an awful lot of people and I think that's that's really important so I wanted to thank you, bring Council. that up thank, thank you. you very much thank you yes. Council Cruz thank you I'm just going to take a moment of personal privilege. Uh, a little scary, the camera being so close, but I want to take a minute to congratulate the Bridgewater State yes. University men's soccer team, which won the MASCAC conference title this past weekend, and will now move on to the NCAA tournament. And I'm a little, little cheating a little bit, but they're led by three Brockton uh, players, Cassie Alves, who was the uh, tournament of the MV, uh, MVP of the tournament, and uh, Odair Montero, who just left Brockton High last year, and of course, my son, Joe Cruz. Another graduate. Thank you. And two of the assistant coaches, Brocktonians, my son, Michael Cruz, and uh, Nick Palancis is uh, one of the assistant coaches. So great uh, Brockton representation, and they're off to the NCAA tournament. We so. wish them well. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Councilor. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councilor. Anything else before us? Seeing none, I'm going to adjourn this meeting. Have a good night. <laughs>